There are all the hippo, everybody, but what I want to do, if we can, I'm just going to see what it looks like quickly while you look at the hippo. Hang on a second, sorry, 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 sorry. Is try and show you the colour. Oh, that is gorgeous. Can we go to the mountain cam, please? There is the mountain cam. Look at the colour that has just descended on the Mara. Isn't that wonderful? Let's go across the way. Now, what I will do is change the exposure so you can see the sort of clouds colours. That's, that's pretty much what it looks like to the naked eye now, which is a very, very pretty indeed. Then if we darken it, because our eyes can do this without any change, of course, because we're very clever, our eyes, that's what it looks like in the sky. And then if we brighten it up a bit, just gives you a better idea of what it looks like on the ground, which is what we can see with our eye. We can do, our eyes can do both those things at once. So clever is the human eye and the brain associated with it. And not even the human, I mean all eyes, all mammal eyes I'd imagine. Now the Angama pride, who we have not seen for a little while, is down there, where you can see those cars. There they are. And in fact you can see a lioness. I wonder if you can, I can. Uh, let me just go down a little bit here. Do you see that slightly? off colour there. See the termite mound in the middle of the screen? Just to the left of that is a lion. Fantastic lion sighting this. Possibly, oh, there are two lions, in fact, on either side of the termite mound. Good grief. I mean, our cup doth run over in abundant fashion on the Sunday afternoon. So that's two lionesses of the Angama pride, which consists, of course, of four lionesses. Ten, Thirteen cubs. And that's about all. They have to kill a lot in order to feed that lot. And they are waiting desperately. This is one of our main stories, of course, for the migration series, the TV series. Our main story, one of, is the struggles that the Angama Pride are having in the absence of the migration herds, which will hopefully, for their sake, arrive in this area very soon. Uh, not really very nice for the migrating herds to come across so many hungry lions, but you know. That is the trial of being part of a migrating herd, I suppose. Scott managed to find a leopard here two days ago, a beautiful, relaxed male leopard. He wasn't live at the time, so he filmed it with his cellular phone. Somewhere around here. But I think the chances of my spotting it now are very small. What we'll do... Daniel, you want to know what those mushroom-like trees are called? There are two main types. One is a shepherd's tree. The other is a Balanites aegyptica, which is a little bit like the torchwood that you get at Juma. Uh, I think it's probably largely the Balanites trees that we're looking at, though. Isn't that lovely? Gosh, that's beautiful. Let's go back to Maine North with the Hippopoptomai, or having a bit of a box. There we are. Still, there's an argument going on between the creche owner and one of her more recalcitrant charges. Well, the one on the right, I think, has been put into the naughty corner, perhaps, or is uh, just being a little geeky on its own. Sorry, Lady Starfire, I missed the meaning of your question. Can we have it again? Oh, you said do female hippo do the wide-mouthed display in the same way that the males do, and uh, yes, they do. It's not really. It probably there. There is a. I think there's a, a, a sort of hierarchy amongst the females in a pod, with the oldest being the most dominant. So they probably do display to each other from time to time. They don't do it nearly as often as the males do. But I suspect when they're irritated or angry or trying to, you, you know, like this one is, trying to sort of discipline or play with the youngster, then yes, there is an element of display to it. Look at all the birds coming in for their evening drink in amongst the pink-skinned little baby hippo. That's just wonderful. Isn't that great? Look at the colour. Ah, 
I'm just amazed by how much light we have actually at this time of the day. I, I didn't think we'd have any anymore, but we do. So we'll just watch these chaps. I find watching the birds like this just very, very satisfying and very peaceful indeed. I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see a little bit more of the scene. <laughs> Oh, isn't that pretty? The deep blue in the far end of the river there. The red of the mud coming down and the silt. Obviously everything is cast in a slightly golden hue by the sun, which has set. And I think it's kind of reflecting off the clouds to give everything a really wonderful colour. Let's go and see what the other hippo are doing. Other side there. I'll have you know that my weaver friends are still boxing each themselves against the window. And probably even more so now that there's light coming out of here, no light outside. Oh, look at that. Pretty, you say, why are the hippo here in the Mara more out of the water than the ones at Juma? Riti, I'm not sure that they are. Uh, they probably spend about the same time feeding during the night. I don't think there's any, any more time spent feeding. And I guess we see them more out of the water because the river has a slightly shallower bottom to it in many places. And so, you know, they don't have to be completely submerged all the time. And in fact, you probably find that for the very big pods, it's quite difficult for them to find sufficient water for all of them to be completely submerged. So that would be my answer, Riti. But I don't think that they spend more time out of the water necessarily than the ones at Juma. There we go, we have our hippo and we have our birds. Oh, more hippo having a fight. And of course, a beautiful piece of grass which has been focused on, not by me, automatically. No, we don't want to see your grass. Come on, grassy. You know, I think this grass has come up. Um, let me just change this. I think it's come up, but since we put the cameras in, I don't remember it being there. There we go. That's called a focus pull, everybody. Not a very good one, but that's what it's called. Right, now, of course, one of the great excitements of becoming a young guide is the fact that finally, after years of going on game drives with various guides and people, you are handed not only your own Land Rover, sometimes your own rifle, a spanky new khaki uniform, but you're also handed a spotlight. <laughs> 